Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? I didn't mean to do that. Please, continue. There's a lot of things about me you don't know anything about, Daddy. Things you wouldn't understand. Things you couldn't understand. You don't want to get mixed up with a guy like me. I'm a loner, Daddy. A rebel. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face with your biker boot. What you talking about, huh? Bam! You're a cheat and a swindler. That's what you are. Now, let me talk to the young people here. You are pray, P-R-E-Y, for these churches. Brand new believers, pray for these churches. P-R-E-Y. It's sexy. It's cool. Calvinism, man. Because I got God in a box. I call that bold talk for a one-eyed fat man. The gospel's not something we live. It is an announcement of what God has done in Christ through the cross by grace to give eternal hope to those who have faith in him. Please, continue. This is a Rebels Cause Radio with Jonathan Wedgworth and your host, the tattooed freak of a man, Dan Fry. That is right. I am that tattooed freak of the man. They call me uh, Papa Tat on the chat, uh, Father Tattoo from the pew. Uh, you know, my friends used to call me Frenchy. I really hated that one. I okay. hate everything French because of it. Okay, Frenchy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but but what the name I, I want to be called is just Dan Fry. Uh, that is what I go by on my own show. This, of course, is a Rebels Cause Radio. Uh, joining me in studio today, you heard him. You heard earlier uh, the wonderful Chris Roloff said that it was with John Wedgworth. Yes, and he is with us. And then we have Mister Diamond Dave Pendress uh, joining us. Uh, just a he's really going to be kind of quiet. Uh, he says, but every time he said that that we've had him on a show. He ends up going off on some like psycho rant that we have to like just I, I'm, I'm telling Ryan to cut the mics and it just it's horrible. The good news is we haven't had to do any sensor beeps yet. So, yes, yeah, so this is true. But he is on tonight uh, with us and uh, joining us via Skype, via Skype, however you want to say that. Uh, we have uh, Nathan Parrish, who is a member of the band uh, Kingdom. Kingdom. You might remember we had him on a couple months ago, introduced you to a pretty stellar video. Uh, by them and had a good conversation and you might be asking why, why are we why are we bringing him on so soon again Miley Cyrus why else do we need a rock star he's gonna tell us about twerking right well that's not the only reason we have him well, on but you you got him just to explain to us what twerking is right N- no do you know what twerking who knows I do not do you know what twer- twerking is Dave I don't know what it is. I get the impression that it's very something very sexual, but yeah, I I have no idea. I I, I googled it and I just got it with some kind of. Uh, it's different than tweaking, right? I think so. It's probably it's probably tweaking plus something else. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, so we brought we brought Nathan on to to enlighten us a little bit to actually give us a different perspective um, from the other side of the uh, performance microphone uh, to give us a perspective because it's you know as much as we like to think these are. These are like microphones that make us stars. We're not stars, but but Nathan has performed in front of large audiences that he can see. Uh, we're really good on the microphone in front of a room of three people, so so we don't know all the pressures, uh, the building up of these people and stuff like that. So we, we brought him on to talk about it. Nathan. Thank you for uh, joining us uh, and being willing to jump in and talk about Miss Miley. <laughs> I am uh, very excited. I've I've never been synonymous with Miley Cyrus. I think it was the first time. <laughs> I have, uh, and hopefully the last, I'll be referred to. <laughs> Speaking of Miley Cyrus, here's Nate. <laughs> exactly. Well, anyway, you, you you bridge that one. It's going to come off as awkward. But, yeah, totally. Uh, but, but you know, we, we wanted to get a perspective of, of somebody that stood up on stage and performed. And, and you know, because I'm assuming there's pressures involved uh, with, with a performer that probably aren't here at least you know I mean, we know there's people listening but but we're not they're not there we can't see and we can't see their reaction um yeah. did you see the vma thing nathan you know i whenever uh, i got on the computer which was my was a mistake sure around that time she did that and it exploded everywhere i, I don't have cable um it's kind of something we do in the parish household we don't we don't have tv and um but uh i was amazed at how many it was funny because most people talking about were christians right so did you see the VMAs? My Cyrus was like, you watch the VMAs? Like, uh, you know, but that aside, like, you know, I, I, I saw um, 
what she did. And sure. obviously, you know, my first reaction was, you know, grody. That's pretty gross. Um, yeah. But, but you know, I taking a step back, you know, our culture, I mean, what do we expect? Our culture has always done this game of we build people up to this and we put them on this pedestal and we tell them what they have to do to be successful. And when they get there and when they do what we've built them to do, we tear them down for it. And it's as interesting, um, I don't know, it's just, we did it, I mean, with Michael Jackson, we built him up like he was some sort of God. And then when he failed, we we're like, how dare you? You know, and it was, what do you expect? They're human beings. And with Miley, I, I just, it's as sad as it is, and the, the, way, the way she's going and trying to distance herself from being a good girl, which that's what society says you have to do to be successful as a female performer. Um, she's just a puppet. And, you know, I, I think that our, as Christians, our first reaction sh should always be, well, you know, sh she's she's in need of the gospel just like we all were, still are, and that she's no different just because she's in front of a camera and people. And um, and then who, where where's the where's the criticism for Robin Thicke? I mean, what is that dude's a grown man up there. Well, have you heard about his happening. last video, though? I mean, his last video that he put out, that Blurred Lines... Completely mm -hmm. topless women on it, on his okay. Vimo or his Vivo account. Vivio? Uh, Vivio, I don't know. Whatever, I'm not hip. <laughs> I, I apologize. Uh, so anyway, uh, you, you actually had, there was an age restriction thing uh, to click to see the uncensored version, and apparently there is just completely topless chicks involved there. So, mm -hmm. so I, I mean, you, the thing that struck me, and, and let me see if th this resonates with you, is how is this much different than what Lady Gaga does or everybody else that didn't make the news that night. How, how, why was this so much different? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's fundamentally, it's not different from what Lady Gaga did or anyone. She ended up in seashells. That's all she was wearing at the end of the night. She's just, you know, she's just, uh, exploiting herself for fame, just like anyone else who gets up there. They're all doing it in different, uh, you know, variations. But I think the thing with Miley that everyone was, so shocked about it is that she's, she's, you know, she's 20 and she had come off of being like this, you know, this Disney, uh, you know, princess, basically Miley Cyrus and good girl image. And, um, I just, I really feel like it's where the, it's just the media. It's just a way of building someone up and making all this hype with hopes that they will crash so they can help their own ratings and push their own agenda. I mean, we're just, they're, they're just building her up to just implode like every other Britney Spears, you name it. Well, I was going to bring up Britney Spears. So there's somebody that we we built up and we're as fascinated with her career as we were with her downfall. Well, I think, Culturally. The, the, I think the difference here <clears throat> is, yeah, uh, Miley Cyrus isn't new. I mean, you know, she was Hannah Montana and now that she's a grown up all of a sudden, all the pretense of being a, a sweet, innocent, clean cut girl is out the window. Um, and we kind of had that. I mean, we had that with Christina well, Aguilera. This we is had a that with radical part, though. I mean, Here's, the difference is, is not the character change, but the the high profile of the previous character. I mean, sure. you know, Britney Spears was a Disney girl. Uh, Christina Aguilera was a Disney girl, uh, but they didn't. They weren't high profile. Well, and even Britney Spears, her first like that, uh, uh, the "Hit Me Baby One More Time." She was 17 when she sang that, so yeah. she was dressed up pretty prov prov provocatively in that movie or video, sorry. And we kind of expected that from her, I think. So as she progressed into a woman, we kind of expected that sensuality to kind of come out. Miley, uh, Hannah Montana, toured around as kind of a, a feel-good person. I mean, is that, is that fair to say, you guys? You think she was kind of like a the, you could you could let your daughter listen to her. That's kind of how they marketed it to, her, to us anyway. I don't don't know that I'll let my daughter. She even ever. had a TV show. Well, yeah, she had a Hannah Montana think, where she was. Yeah, on the Disney Channel. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm too old to have grown up with any of that. I know there's a bunch of those shows right now where they're kind of pushing these kids towards being music musicians right. as they as they graduate out. That my children watch that I, I've had to watch and go, ah, eh, some of these aren't okay. Some of these are. Well, all you need is a good auto tune, and anyone can be a musician. <laughs> Not me. There's <laughs> well, nothing yeah. saving me. Oh, you, you, you <laughs> should, Nathan. You should have heard him a little bit ago. <laughs> yeah, there's no saving me. I, I'm horrible. So, so Nathan, tell me a little bit about. 
the the pressure of the stage though. So when you guys get up on stage, do you feel pressured to act certain ways, or or how, or how do you deal with that too? And how is that? Well, di- I'm, I'll throw in one also. And how is that different I, for someone who's a Christian musician? I, I don't think it's different. Um, I think uh, for me, Kingdom's a fairly new band, so you know we're we've been going for about two years. But uh, I've been in previous uh, worship bands that were pretty pretty large scale and. I, I remember um, kind of being a new Christian and just being in rock bands my whole life and then doing the worship thing and not ever uh, making a transition. So, you know what I mean? I was still doing the same things that I would have done in a punk rock band. And so I'm jumping off speakers and throwing my guitar and catching it and and uh, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And people, you know, the kids, kids love it because we're like a youth worship band. And then I think... You know, there's moments, and I can remember on stage being like, I am, uh, and this is fun, granted, but it's just really feeding into the the rock star thing. And there's nothing worse in the world than a Christian rock star. I mean, it's just embarrassing, you know, and um, giving into that pressure of, like you're talking about, being a something and, and, and being a, a rock star or whatever you want to call it. And I, I remember feeling that on stage and there had, there had to be a moment where I had to evaluate what it is I'm doing. Is, am I leading people in worship and, or am I trying to make my own mark as, as something or as some, you know, a guy. And, uh, I had to change some things and I, I look back and I did some really stupid things. It was fun. But as far as giving glory to God, I was, I was not doing that. And it may have come out, come off like that to people, but, um, no, I wasn't. It was it was for me. I can definitely relate with that. Um, I was part of a praise team for a while as a as a bass player. Um, I was also part of a um, a band out of a college town. And what was that band called, John? I, I know I fought that even back then. I, <laughs> I just want to know what the band's called, John. The band was called Saving Souls. Oh, I, how Saving, was that? Biblical? Saving Souls. John was Saving Souls. No, I, okay. They, I even even back then I fought that. You know, I said, why don't we call it like Ecclesia or something? You know. Um, they- is good man <laughs> what's that saving souls is perfect there's so many cool logos you can do with it the animals can do like snakes all kinds of cool stuff yeah. the problem is is it turned we should have we shouldn't have been called saving souls we should have been called sinner's prayer i mean you know um <laughs> but i the point is i i get it i mean you know because i was in the praise band uh i was in this band and it was supposed to be for the glory of god but who was it really i mean come, come on it was for the glory of john you know what i mean it's like i have to i can't just you know, good bassists are supposed to be able to go nuts when they need to and then stick to the GCDs when they don't need to. Well, I couldn't stick to the GCDs. I always had to, like, you know, put in a, some slap or some octave or something just because hey, then it's all of a sudden it's like John's there, you know. Hey, John, hey, there's John. And then if it went well, I felt like, you know, a superstar. And when it didn't go well, I kind of wanted to, like, hide behind the amp. You know what I mean? So oh, I get yeah. it. I get it. it te- there's such a tendency to make it about us rather than uh, about, you know, who we're doing it for. Have you ever had anyone come up to you and be like, are you John from Saving Souls? Has that ever happened to you? It will now. (laughs) Christian art is actually not that different from the secular market in that way where, I mean, if you look at it, we still do the same kind of idol worship uh, that the secular world does, um, but we can justify it because, oh, they're they're a really good worship leader or they're a good role model, so we'll put them up on this pedestal. It's the same. And uh, as Kingdom, we'll play shows and sometimes... It'll be, uh, you know, at a festival and it's like, okay, so you're on the rock stage and, you know, you're, you, you're up there with rock bands and, and we're strictly a worship band. We do rock, but we're a worship band. And we always make a, you know, a, a, an effort to uh, put forth worship. So whether we start off with scripture or we do something that separates us from that rock and roll thing where we, we don't just want to get up and rock your faces off mm-hmm. for the sake. It's just it's pointless, and uh, we're we're not that great anyway. So, we we we, our goal is to lead people into worship, and um, and so we try to make statements that way when we play and make it obvious, I guess. Well, I think there's also an an obvious talent that you guys have as musicians, um, and and you know certainly use that to the best of your ability to the glory of God. The thing that 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 really oh we're coming up on a break. Yeah, we are. This is Rebels Cause Radio. We do that. We interrupt people during with our break. (laughs) I mean, it happens, uh, but during that interruption, we do get a time time to remind you that we're that show that encourages you to read your Bible, to actually read it, to know what it says, to observe 
uh, other people reading it and their commentaries about it. Uh, to go to church, it's a great place to meet other people that want to read their Bibles. To love Jesus and forsake the world, this is a Rebels Cause Radio. This is Dan Fry, host of a Rebels Cause Radio, and I'm here to ask you a question. Are you tired of being marketed a second-rate product at a first-rate price? Or perhaps more importantly, do you want to wear something that shows who you are, which is a Christian, but doesn't look silly or even worse, just theologically incorrect? I want to introduce you to Wrath and Grace Clothing. They're a company that wants to provide you with clothes that you actually like, prices you can afford, And most importantly, they offer a sound biblical message that represents who you are as a Christian. From the message presented in the graphics to the fit and finish, they have made their company on first rate designs and high quality fabrics and inks and offered at a price you can afford. Wrath and Grace Clothing, their mission is to proclaim the wrath and the grace of a sovereign God one shirt at a time. Go to wrathandgrace.com to check out all their designs. That's wrathandgrace.com. Yes, now your favorite programs on Webcast One Live can all be watched and listened to on any Android or Apple device. Your phone, tablet, or iPad. Yes, your favorite shows on Webcast One Live are available live or on podcast wherever you go. Let me introduce to you some of our great shows. Shalom. Every week on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman, we'll talk about issues in the Middle East, issues related to the Jewish tradition and religious traditions in general, and keep you up to date on exactly what's going on around the world. You may know some of the story, but you haven't heard all of the story until you've heard it on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman and our special guests we have on every week. Hi, I'm Doc. You listen to me every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. on Doc and Lefty Radio Podcast Program where we discuss all the relevant topics of the day, including state, local, and national politics. My partner in crime, Lefty, often likes to have a little bit of conservative justice served upon him. So please turn in for the fireworks every week from 6 to 7 p.m. on Tuesdays at webcastonelive.com. Thank you. So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know, there's an app for that. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. When you find yourself in danger, when you're threatened by a stranger, when it looks like you will take a licking. <laughs> the super chicken. Know that there are a lot of great radio shows that you can be a fan of, but there is only one that's certified organic, free range, and cage free. Just like that hippie chicken you ate for dinner. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. I am your host. They call me Dan Fry. I'm not going to go through the list of nicknames of Dan. I've done it already once. I think once is plenty to say that I'm Papa Tat from the chats or Father <laughs> Tattoo from the view. And, and just, there he goes. <laughs> uh, we are sponsored by our good friends over at Wrath and Grace Clothing, wrathandgrace.com. I am wearing, and for those of you on the radio, you can't see this lovely T-shirt, but I'm wearing the uh, sheep and wolf's clothing. So at the very bottom of the sheep, the, the, the sheep there, there's a wolf. Here it is. I'm trying to. I'm trying to line You're it up. Yeah, it. I'm not aiming good at it at all. But there's a wolf on my shirt and a flock of sheep. It's one of their shirts. They sent it to me. I wear it. Um, they do have the Keep Calm and Preach preach On shirts uh, that I help design, uh, although they're almost all out of sizes there. Oh, cool. So, so uh, Is that why John got a small? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's actually a 3X, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, they, they're, great, they're a great company. Uh, they care about God and his word. They care about... Uh, uh, quality and they care about uh, the messages they're putting out. And so uh, we're happy to have them as sponsors. And I just wanted to give them their shout out for the uh, evening here. Uh, joining us on a uh, via Skype, uh, we have uh, Nathan Parrish and we're kind of talking about this Miley Cyrus thing. Now it's kind of cooled down a little bit, which is, we kind of like to, we kind of like to let things settle down and watch people's reactions. 
And one of the things that really struck me, and, and we talked about it a little bit, I'm going to rehash it, maybe try to see if we can't take it a different angle here. Uh, but uh, Dave just watched on his uh, iPhone or smartphone kind of the performance that Miley did while, while we were doing the show. Right. And, and you were particularly horrified by it. Well, yeah, I don't have uh, T. We ha- I have a TV, but it, I don't have cable or anything. I don't really watch TV. So I haven't really watched TV in a while, but uh, I thought it was pretty bad. I mean, See, I, you know, to me, uh, watching it, knowing what our rappers, our, our famous musicians, you know, like guys like T.I. and and uh, Little Wheezy or what is Little Wayne? Wayne? I don't, I don't know what his They're name is. There probably is a Little Wheezy now. I yeah, I, I, they change <laughs> at, at P Diddy or I, I whatever he goes by these days. Puff, Puff Daddy. Uh, Sean, I don't know who Puff Puff, who Puff, Puff gives. Yeah, yes. well, and you got you got Snoop Lion, yes, uh, or Snoop Dogg. I mean, these guys are singing about this stuff. The guy on stage produced what looked like a porno uh, to most people, even non Christians. Qu- uh, commented on Robin Thicke's videos as kind of being uh, more than too much. Uh, I it didn't really strike me as all that bad. Uh, by our world standards. Now, by Christian standards, of course, we all look back and go, that's that's bad. Yeah, but Christian standards have been, like in America, that's kind of been everyone's standards. Yeah, but we've moved away from that. I mean, there's been a shift. I know, but there's still a remnant, I think, of decency. I, I, and I think that's why we're getting a reaction now of that's terrible is because there's still a remnant, I, I think. I really think that the, the, the reaction isn't limited. Because we look, look, at, look at Lady Gaga. Nobody responded to her uh, prancing around. Uh, doing quick ch- costume changes on stage and then ending up in seashells. Nobody talked about it. She was she actually was revealing more skin than Miley Cyrus was right. and was dancing just as seductively. And actually, she did a better job of dancing. So, I mean... Maybe the Miley Cyrus thing was so gaudy and just bad and in your face. You know what I think it is? And I'm, I'm going to put forth my, my, my perception. I think that what is happening is 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 mothers and daughters that grew up watching Miley Cyrus and, and enjoying her music aren't able to distance themselves from that teenage uh, girl that claimed to be a Christian at one point uh, that, that was but they that all was, claimed to be yeah that was one was young and innocent and mm-hmm. and they aren't able to so when they see her they can only see a fourteen year old girl doing that instead of the grown woman she's become you know I think it's more a matter of they maybe they feel betrayed I mean you know, this is safe. This is safe territory. Then all of a sudden, you know, the gloves are off and everything else. Well, <laughs> you and, know, you know um, and, and to me, this seems like a rebellion. You know, she she came out from kind of a, let's just say they pigeonholed her into this goody goody role. Uh, I'm not saying that's good or bad or, or anything, but she was kind of pigeonholed as this goody goody. And now she's trying to recreate herself. How many times have we seen? personalities recreate themselves into something completely different because they don't want to be known as the innocent yeah. little well it, even it, even to take it in a little less offensive way so you got the comedians you know that that always get the slapstick roles that like well, let's say, let's take like Adam Sandler how many times did that guy tried to do a serious movie you know i don't know i haven't seen one yeah well he has <coughs> and they're they're generally <laughs> pretty horrible last couple, those are those are dramas right yeah they weren't funny no. <laughs> well, the thing about the thing about every Adam Sandler movie I've seen is, and I haven't seen them all, and I don't really care to. Sure. But it's um, I'm not suggesting it's that. It's always the same. It's always a different setup, but it's always the, the same, same thing. It's yeah. it's <clears throat> some poor loser down on his luck, you know, meets a girl, almost doesn't get her, gets her happy ending. You know, maybe he's a wedding singer, maybe he's a devil. I don't know, but it's always the same kind of little you well know, setup. Yeah, but he's done it. He's done a couple, like he did that one, uh, up loud and extremely close, or whatever. And actually, that was a brilliant movie, uh, with the exception of Adam Sandler. Um, and he did good. I it was just really weird to see him. But he, he he's trying to recreate himself. But we've seen we've seen that happen in other genres, so to speak. People kind of come out of something completely different. I, I think that's what Miley's doing. Uh, I'm not saying it's good. Uh, I would highly have preferred her to stay in her old genre of kind of the little Christian girl on on because she was pretty vocal about it at one point. Yeah, well, it's just it's, good marketing. Yeah, you know, it's just good marketing. You can't. She grew up under the shadow. Of Billy Ray Cyrus was, you know, the king of the mullet. Was he's a <laughs> country star? Hey, don't don't break my heart. There, <laughs> no, don't go there. There's no such thing as a as a country star that's not a Christian or a good old boy. Sure. And so she's coming from that, and that's her built-in audience. Now she's discovering, you know, well, we can't do this forever. I can't be a 25 year old Miley Cyrus goody two shoes. She probably, you know, is just 
it's just marketing where eventually, I mean, let's be, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but I don't think she's that talented. I, don't, I doubt she writes her own songs. What else can you do that this society tells you is successful as a female performer? You have to lose clothing and you have to sell out to make it pretty, they, like it's go down the line. How many of Madonna's, all, all, all of them, they've all done it. And it's, we've created a culture that breeds that. Right. It's sad, but. Well, you know, but it, even the song that she was singing, like the lyrics are particularly, I was more offended by the lyrics. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, cause like I, and I even blogged a little bit about the lyrics cause, cause the lyrics are very telling about where she's at. Um, you know, they're, they're just, uh, they're atrocious. It's a, we can do what we want. We can kiss who we want. Uh, let's see here. I, I got a little section here. Um, let's see. Uh, so la di da, 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 di. very creative here. Okay. <laughs> Those are the best lyrics. We like to party dancing with Miley, doing whatever we want. This is our house. This is our rules. We can't stop. We won't stop. Can't you see it's we who own the night, which is kind of weird. Can't you see it's we who about that life. We can't stop. We won't stop. We run things. We don't, we don't run. We, uh, we don't take nothing from nobody. It's our party. We can do what we want. It's our party. We can say what we want. It's our party. We can love who we want. We can kiss who we want. We can see who we want. Uh, earlier on, she says only God can judge you, which is a pet peeve of mine because that is factual that God will judge you. Uh, but the only God can judge you stuff gets passed off as scripture all the time. And, and there is uh, no verse in scripture that says only God can judge you. That's a right. line from Tupac. I th- yeah, that's that. That's basically what that means is I'm doing a bunch of bad stuff. Please don't tell me what I'm doing is bad because yeah. I know I'm wrong. Yeah, if, you, if you're like only God, the people that say only God can judge me, they must not really believe in God because if that's true, which God will judge you. That's not going to be a good, that's not a good thing. Yeah. Well, especially when you're disobeying. I mean, I, I think you're right. I think the people that get the only God can judge me tattoos or love that kind of saying, uh, they're basically saying that I will take up my sin with God. Don't worry about me. And and the problem is, first of all, it's kind and loving to worry about somebody's sin. You know, it, it you know, it's, it's, if you see the bus behind somebody, I hate to use Penn Gillette, but if you see the bus behind somebody, it's kind and loving to tell them there's a bus behind him. And dealing with obvious sins of people and saying, hey, look, this is a sin. This is forbidden in scripture. It's not judging. That That's helping. That's recognizing. That's that's all kinds of things. And we do have to come to judgment. At some point, we have to say, uh, we got to we gotta leave it. You know, we got to move on. We got to address somewhere else, uh, take another tactic. Uh, so we do make judgments about that. But the only God can judge me thing just is really offensive. But really what got me is there's some symbolism there. So the Bible does talk about the nighttime and how sin loves darkness. And, and, and you see, she's kind of, I almost wonder if the songwriter isn't uh, aware of that in the Bible, because it's a very awkward line where it's at. It's we that own the night. Well, if you notice, like a lot of musicians recently, I, I noticed that, uh, uh, what's that dude he wrote that Jesus walks? Yeah. Oh, Kanye West. Kanye West. Who goes by Jesus now. Uh, yeah. Oh, and his boy. new... Uh, <laughs> On his new album, he wrote a song, uh, I Am a God. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, like, weird... Biblical m- Biblical, imagery. like... Imagery. That yeah, doing. but it's, like, twisted and, sure. like, well, evil. Well, and this is twisted. I mean, they say it's we that own the night as if uh, the, the nighttime is is somehow uh, a good thing to own. It's... I don't know if it's... They're make, making a necessarily biblical reference. It's just kind of... The it's night is the party time. You yeah, know, well, it's an awkward... It's, you know, we know that when the scripture says that uh, much evil is covered up by darkness and stuff like that. Um, I, that's well, a that's, horrible paraphrase. Well, but. I would have a problem... I, I think it's biblically wrong because it's basically saying, we know, you know, we're pleased with our rebellion. We're sure. content with well, our that's, rebellion. That's where I went with in my blog is... Yeah. yeah I, I think Miley Cyrus is, seeing, is right here saying, I'm a sinner... And I don't care, and I can't stop, and I don't want to stop. And that can't stop's kind of, I mean, that's true. She makes some pretty profound uh, statements there. I don't know that but she's it's aware. it's not an admission of guilt. I don't think she's aware of it, no. It, yeah. But, but, but I, I think, think I think she is on some level because her whole thing, it, we could love who we want, we could do what we want. All of those lyrics are against people that 
would say otherwise. And so th- she is aware that there is like no, right. But she's speaking not, against. She's speaking into culture with her opinions. Right. I know. I don't think anybody's disagreeing here, but I I think she makes some statements here that are pretty powerful. Uh, I think she's saying she's a slave to sin. I really I really do think that deep down that's that's what these verses say to me. I think she's saying that she can't stop sinning, and that she doesn't want to. I mean that right. I mean when I said it's not an admission of guilt, I don't mean like she's not admit. You know, it's not like it's not a contrite thing. It's not like yeah, it's not you a know, good thing. It's a it's a it's a she's celebra- screaming it. Yeah, celebratory. she's screaming it from the rooftops. Yeah. Um, but it's really weird. Let's uh, you you said something kind of interesting just a minute ago though. You said you didn't think she writes her own songs. Uh, what what makes you think that? Nate, did we lose Nate? Is Nate on the phone now? He's on the phone. I don't like that question anyway. We'll just we'll answer that one later. <laughs> Nate, you're on the phone now. Sorry, uh, <clears throat> my video went out. That's all right. You sound better on the phone anyway. So okay, we know what you look. We'll just put the Kingdom album every time uh, you're up there. <laughs> now, okay. uh, I wanted to cover some of your guys' stuff because part of the what we lured you on here to talk about Miley Cyrus is we promised we'd talk about some of the upcoming stuff. Uh, we've only got one minute to the break, so we'll bring that in in the next segment. Um, yeah. So so I guess uh, I don't really... Parting thoughts on this whole Miley thing? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think uh, we just pray for her, and, and uh, we don't uh, just try to not give attention. The media feeds off it and that whole thing, and, you know, I just think it's unfortunate, but we've product of, of sin, and we just change the gospel just like anyone else. So. All right. Well, this is a Rebels Cause Radio. Uh, we're that show. I encourage you to uh, read your Bible. It's a little book, probably kind of dusty. Just dust that off, read it. It's a good thing. Go to church. Find a church full of people that also read Bibles. Uh, a church that teaches in an expository fashion, preferably. Uh, one that's not afraid to teach the entire counsel of the Word of God. Uh, love Jesus. The Bible's written about Jesus centered around the history of redemption. And uh, we want you to love that man. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free. What type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee. All of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're gonna be listening. They're gonna wanna know what your challenges are. Then they're gonna come and give you options and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now and then leave and then come back, charge you again, and and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. (laughs) 
Keep going though, I like this. <laughs> Just give us a try. I'm gonna take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Don't just sit there. Get involved. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. Uh, this is a Rebels Cause Radio. I am your host, Dan Fry. Joining me in the studio today, uh, of course, is our, our ever faithful, the uh, the uh, always present. Um, at, at least in body, if not in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, John Wedgworth, I guess. That's that guy. Enough of the lead up. Uh, and then, of course, we've got Diamond Dave Pendrus. Do you like the role on the R, even? It's yeah, it's all right. You know, I could do like the... No, in this corner, do the Bush Bruce Buffer 180 on you. I don't no. know. No, no. You guys are just like... I can't roll my R's, which means a I can't say A bunch of wet dog. blankets. I'm all excited to be here. I tried to say dog, and I say butt. Uh this uh, this is only peril. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for talking over me, John. It's cool. Just hey, have a conversation. Hey, hey, it's your mic. So, 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 David, how's it going? Today? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> you don't have that. Uh, these guys. It's like we've never done radio before. Never before. Uh, in this studio. Uh, this is only an hour episode tonight. Uh, we're doing that because uh, for those of you that are friends with me on Facebook, which means we're really good friends. I mean. You know, we're, we're like Facebook official friends. Are me and you friends on Facebook? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of you that are friends with me on Facebook, you know my wife is uh, in her last final days before or even hours or moments before. Not her first final days? Yeah, not her first final, her last final okay, days. Her final final days. Yeah, final, final, final. You know, you got the full term and then she got the end of the term and she's at the end of the term of her pregnancy. Final days three. Yeah, so... Uh, so she will be uh, giving birth shortly, and so uh, we're just going to cut it to an hour tonight so I can get home to spend time with her. Do you know what it's going to be yet? Uh, it's going to be a human. A human? I'm pretty sure. Heck, if that call comes in the next half hour, you might have to deal with me for the rest of the show. Yeah, that's that's true. You could have to deal with John. I apologize beforehand. Uh, the good news is there's only 20 minutes left, and we do have a great guest on. Uh, we've got Nathan Parrish from the Band Kingdom. Uh, you know, we talked about Miley. I, I, I feel like we've given that more than enough radio time. I mean, I just spent money to talk about Miley Cyrus on the radio, which is a little counterproductive to my mission. So I do want to talk about what's going on with the band Kingdom. Nathan was joining us on Skype. Uh, he has a, a bad internet connection. I It's probably because he doesn't have a cable. I'm just saying, if because you know, he doesn't have TV, he probably doesn't have cable. That's, that's no, I'm actually at church. I am at, at church right now. Well, then they and probably cheaped out. They probably just cheaped out. We didn't pay the bill. Yeah. You know, so 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 uh, so you're at the church. You're uh, you've got a new new album coming out, is my understanding, right? Yes, sir. And, and what's the new album called? And I guess start tell there. us about it. Well, uh, the new album is called Redeemer, and it comes out in November. Uh, actually, comes out on eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, nice. And cool. I mean, I think we can kind of guess what it's about, but could you tell us a little bit sure. about uh, where you're going with it and what the vision is? I guess. Um, so with this album, I mean, as probably with every album we make until the end of time, it's about, uh, Christ and, uh, the gospel message, um, through worship. Um, this one, uh, kind of, um, focuses in a lot on the, uh, just the redeeming, you know, uh, redeeming, uh, properties of, of Christ and like the, the Christian life, you know, uh, from creation to, you know, from being born to being born again. So we, we go through, I mean, um, I feel like on this album, we, the last album was, was pretty straightforward, but we were even more uh, straightforward on this album as far as being very uh, uh, unambiguous about who we're singing about. It's very uh, Jesus-centered. And you know, it's funny, as uh, I think last time I was on, we, we talked about At The Sound was, that, was our single at the time. And it actually did really well at radio. I got to like number 11 on the rock charts. Um, but uh, our uh, guy at the label was telling us the reason it didn't get any further is because uh, some of the programmers said it was too praise and worship and too, it wasn't ambiguous enough. 
It wasn't Eric ambiguous Bokonka. enough. <laughs> that's yeah. That's what the, um, that's what some of the programmers. This is Christian radio, mind you. Uh, programmers told us it wasn't. You know, it was too praise and worship, as far as being very uh, Jesus centric. Was it and not? Was, it wasn't uplifting enough for Becky. <laughs> it, it wasn't. Uh, you know, I think it. The, Who's the Becky? mistake we made is uh, we, we, you couldn't tell if it was. You, you could tell we weren't singing about a girlfriend. Okay. And that's that's the mistake with Christian radio. Sometimes you gotta. Make it ambiguous towards like, oh, this is a love song. Well, and you know, even even good Christian bands have made that mistake, though. I mean, look at like Jars of Clay. There's a couple songs there that you're like, if you just threw a chick's name in here or just yeah. assumed they were talking about a chick, right. great love song. I mean, in fact, uh, I think uh, the uh, ChristianMingle.com uses a Jars of Clay song. Um, it's I Want to Fall in Love with You. Yeah, right? that's yeah. Jars of Clay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, that's and, right. And, and out of context, when you don't realize they're talking about Christ, uh, it, it's... Love Song for a Savior is what that song is called. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds a lot like just a love song. It's yeah, kind of weird. there's nothing necessarily inherently wrong about writing a love song as a Christian. I mean, that's... Sure, well, I... No. I like love that, you know? <laughs> it just... It, it's kind of funky, and I like Jars of Clay, and I'll defend them yeah. quite a bit because they're PCA guys, so... So I feel bound to. They did the best cover of Christmas Time is Here I've ever heard. Yeah. They, well, they're good. They're talented musicians. They are. Yeah, they are. They 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 survived the the pressures of going kind of mainstream because out of most Christian bands, Flood got a ton of airplay. Yes. Uh, you know, they could have very easily gone secular and they just didn't. Uh, right. I, I appreciate that about them. But but that song is one of those like you're like, wow, what are we listening to here? This is kind of a femi weird singing to my girlfriend type thing. Now, do you want to yeah. explain to, I'm sorry, do you want to explain to Dan who Becky is? Yeah. It seemed like you got that reference. Wait, Becky, I, uh, you know, I don't know who Becky is. <laughs> okay. Only Becky John is. got okay. that reference. All right, uh, Christian, kind of the executives in a lot of the Christian radio industry, they, they said with the, their marketing demographic is this hypothetical lady named Becky. She's this lady in her 30s. She has kids. She has problems in life. And, oh, okay. and uh, this, these songs are meant to make her feel uplifted and better and, you know, about herself and all that stuff. So ah, something every day. That's, that's why I stuck as a songwriter. You got, I don't, I'm not writing to Becky, dang it. <laughs> no, you're not. I have more songs written to soccer moms across the world. Yes, yes, and with minivans. Actually, you know, one of the things I appreciate about Kingdom so much is you guys aren't writing to Becky. You guys are writing about our Lord and Savior. I mean, you guys are a breath of fresh air to me in that way. Um, well, I appreciate that. Because so little, I mean, not there's there there uh, are guys out there. I mean, well, first of all, you have the whole hit Christian hip hop thing, uh, which ninety percent that's great. It's super deep. Oh, yeah. It's super rich, uh, and it's very Christocentric. Um, but there's even a group called that. Uh, close, Christ centric. <laughs> I think they're Christocentric. I, I called him Christocentric, and and uh, they, Evangel uh, chastised me. For oh, okay, well, well he then, didn't chastise me, but he corrected me. You were listening probably more. I was probably dealing with a technical difficulty. I didn't remember that part of the show. Yeah, but in terms of outside of hip hop, oh yeah, Frankie's Frankie's getting on me now. Frankie from Wrath and Grace Clothing is uh, listening online. He's on the chat right now. So if you want to order shirts, there's the guy right there. And he says it's Christ centric. So you're right, John. I apologize. I, I can't be wrong all the time. Um, anyway, um, yeah. So, but outside of that oasis of Christian hip hop, there's very little good stuff out there. And 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 so that's why I appreciate guys like you know Kingdom and and people who are doing what you're doing because it's putting Christ front and center. What do we have? Did Ryan get a song loaded? I, up? I emailed him the song. He should have it. Is he working on it? Is it, he working on it? Ryan? I just got the confused. I don't know what John's talking about. Look from the booth. Uh, we are getting ready to take our last break, our last and final. I like to double up on the negatives there, so the last and final break. Uh, when we come back from that, we will try to play the song. Uh, what song What song did you select of Nathan's, uh, John? Well, I actually, he gave, with you. No, <laughs> he, gave, he gave it to me. He gave it to me. The kingdom cover it's of one uh, song for God Savior. of Fire. God and, of Fire. Yes, and so I think that it's good. I've heard it. It's great. Um, I think that okay. I think. Well, that let me let me have him tell us about it. What, I wasn't going to tell us. us about he's it. got one minute. Guys, guys, give me the, give me the the synopsis of God of Fire really quick. Okay, so this this song is actually a, a song that we recorded before, but we had like a, a guy named David Tulane remixed it and kind of beefed it up a little bit. But basically, it was taken straight out of uh, Jordan, uh, our lead singer, wrote this and basically took it out of studying Elijah and that whole deal and kind of like the the idea of God is not just this wussy. You know, um, with guy with Vidal Sassoon hair and a deer, you know, and a and a sheep over his shoulder. He's 
you know, he's all consuming fire, and we just wanted to make a song about that, kind of illustrating the uh, powerfulness of Christ. All right. Well, when we come back, we'll uh, we'll talk to Nathan a little bit more about his upcoming album, what the mo- what Kingdom's doing, where they're touring and playing, and all that kind of great stuff. Uh, in the meantime, we just want to encourage you to read your Bibles, to go to church. <laughs> yeah, Dave, go to church, Dave, and love Jesus and forsake the world. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. This is Dan Fry, host of A Rebel's Cause Radio, and I'm here to ask you a question. Are you tired of being marketed a second-rate product at a first-rate price? Or perhaps more importantly, do you want to wear something that shows who you are, which is a Christian, but doesn't look silly or even worse, just theologically incorrect? I want to introduce you to Wrath and Grace Clothing. They're a company that wants to provide you with clothes that you actually like, prices you can afford, And most importantly, they offer a sound biblical message that represents who you are as a Christian. From the message presented in the graphics to the fit and finish, they have made their company on first-rate designs and high-quality fabrics and inks and offered at a price you can afford. Wrath and Grace Clothing, their mission is to proclaim the wrath and the grace of a sovereign God one shirt at a time. Go to wrathandgrace.com to check out all their designs. That's wrathandgrace.com. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. Get away from us, you mean old credit card. We don't have any more money. We're in trouble now. Save us! Help! Somebody save us! Somebody help! Help! Save us! Hi, I'm Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of Des Moines. If your credit card's a little too animated, give us a call. To save the day. That means that Mighty Mouse is on the way. Don't just sit there, get involved. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. I am that host of a uh, well of a man. Yeah, host of a <laughs> man. Oh man. Well, yeah, I, I was busy locking John out of the studio. Uh now he's he's trying to get on the microphone. In the production moon, maybe. Yep. I hadn't thought this one out so well. No, you didn't. But uh, that's all right. So uh, I am the host. They call me Dan Fry. Joining me in the studio is just Dave, uh, Diamond Dave Pendrus. Just and, me. Just Dave. Sorry, Dave. I can't do that for you right now. Uh, we are hosted, or uh, oh, man, I'm messing up. We are sponsored by Wrath and Grace Clothing. Uh, you saw their ad uh, during the break. For those of you on KTIA, you might not get that ad. Uh, so we want to tell you about them. It's Wrath and Grace Clothing, uh, wrathandgrace.com. Uh, they uh, sponsor me. It's where I get all these great T-shirts. Today I'm wearing the Wolf and Sheep's clothing. Uh, it's got a uh, verse about beware of the false prophets on the back. I'm not really sure exactly which verse it is off the top of my head. Uh, they are the ones that produce that awesome and like totally, I think it's sold out now, the uh, uh, Keep Calm and preach, calm, preach On that John's wearing. Yeah, uh, the, you could see if you'd let me into the studio. Uh, I, I'm really upset that Ryan is such a... Uh, a wimp that he lets you take his mic from him. Hey, you know what, though? That's okay. It's kind of like a field trip for me. I get to be on the air and in the studio room all at once. Well, the good news is uh, you're not here. So, <laughs> uh, Joining us on the phone uh, is, of course, uh, Nathan Parrish. Nathan is a member of the band Kingdom, and he is... Uh, he's telling us... He was telling us before the break about his song. Ryan, do you got that queued up now? Do you got the song? Rather than focusing on getting John back on camera... Uh, in the production <laughs> studio. Yeah, he's uh, getting that. John, I'm just now. telling you, uh, you're making that small look small. It's, yeah, I, I definitely feel <laughs> The chocolate covered gummy bears you were eating earlier chocolate probably don't help. gummy bears make all the difference in the world. Uh, uh, Frankie uh, from Wrath and Grace is on my my Twitter here saying uh, Matthew 7 15. So that's the verse. Okay, turn it up, Brian. This is God of Fire by Kingdom. No doubt. Nothing can. 
And uh, that is God of Fire. That, of course, is just a little bit of a clip. Uh, if you want to hear uh, the whole thing or to pre-order their album or find out more about what they're doing, where do where do we direct people to get a hold of you at, Nathan? Uh, kingdomband.com is our website. And uh, that will take you to all the other social media things, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, et cetera. And is that, is that, are those songs, is, when, you said that's coming out in November. When, when are you going to drop, like, the first singles and stuff like that? Off yeah, so this, that one's actually going to be the first single. That that's going to hit radio sometime next week. Um, so it'll probably, hopefully, hopefully get into rotation um, in the in the following week. So around the end of September, you should be hearing that one. So it was um, first ever heard here. First ever time ever heard was right there. Well, it was a remix, okay. so it's actually been on a prior. <laughs> It, oh, we kind of—it's kind of like we almost had something cool, but not quite. Well, actually, we had, had it, and then you cool. cut it early. <laughs> well, we do cut it early. We're not a radio station I know. that <laughs> plays music. We're a radio station that puts us on. I don't know why. <laughs> It'd be better with music. Um, uh, now, qu- question for you, Nathan. We've had a couple people in the chats ask about it, and I was going to ask you anyway. Uh, uh, talk about the artwork that you've drawn for this album uh, cover. Is it's really phenomenal, and there's a lot of people asking, kind of, what's the thought behind it? What what into it? That kind of thing. Uh, the new artwork I sent over? Yeah, the new one. The one we've had it up on yeah. the screen whenever you're oh, talking. Okay. We got Sorry. it right now. It's the Redeemer cover. Looks like yeah, you got so. the skull of Gagatha. Yeah, uh. Gagatha there. Got well. Basically, um, it's kind of a uh, a short version of the story of redemption. Um, so it starts off from creation. You have up, you know, up in the uh, the, the left hand corner, he's creating Adam out of the sand. Um, it's got the apple. The serpent kind of is throughout. Um, it's got Gagatha. The tree in the middle represents the cross. Uh, the crown is kind of the, you know, the left side is uh, the crucifixion crown, you know, with the thorns, and then the right side is the glory the crown, so it's all gold. And then, um, you know, his hand with the blood coming down, there's chains being broken. There's uh, the bottom right has scripture, kind of like the word coming alive, um, and then into the lion, which uh, is carryover from the last album. You know, he's described as a lion. Um, it's got... New Jerusalem coming down at the top. Um, we're some angel wings on the far right to kind of represent heaven. Um, and then this, uh, there's all the little dark patches represent darkness kind of um, receding. I think that's incredible. That's, that's Thank you. Really, yeah, that's, really great. It's, it's really neat. You, you, the, the consistency of the imagery, the, the importance of each little piece uh, goes well with the theme of Redeemer. Uh, give me the date again on, on the release of this new album. So it comes out uh, on November 12th, 2013. So it's 11, 12, 13. It's an easy way to remember it. And um, we should see some uh, some promo videos and some different things coming out fairly soon. I haven't even – so you guys are actually the first ones ever to see the artwork um, in this. It's not completely finished, but it's basically a prototype. So you guys are the first ones to see that as well. Awesome. Awesome. Now you, uh, you have an, also, you have a page for all sorts of art you do. And that's actually how I became acquainted with you through uh, pirate Christian radio. I saw one of your art pieces on there. How is anything, I know you're really active with kingdom right now. Um, is there anything really going on with your artist page right now, or just this, just this album cover and that's it right now? Well, the album cover, you know, now that it's, it's getting close to being done, um, I have some stuff kind of brewing right now. I'm working on a, um, a series, a uh, gospel series. Okay. Um, kind of illustrating. I have a, a few pieces on there. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but there's a one of like a little boy. He's, he's in like a, looks like a thorn bush mm-hmm. and there's a hands pulling him out and he's got like a stick in his hand. Like he's going to kind of defend himself. So that's the whole idea of Christ coming and getting us and, and you know, coming for us. So I'm doing a series kind of elaborating on that. like the gospel. What's your artist um, page really quick. It's uh, it's just on Facebook and it's Nathan Parrish artist page. And that's got all the artwork that you've got going, uh, as well as, uh, you know, you probably can find links to, to the rest of your stuff, uh, I suppose, yeah. to, to there. Uh, totally. 
Uh, that's pretty awesome. Nathan, thank you for coming on. And uh, we do expect to get an advanced copy of your CD here in the studio. Uh, <laughs> Will, my friend. All right. I'll hold you to that. I do everybody else. So. Right on, man. All right. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and uh, joining us and blessing us with good conversation and a, a, a different perspective than I think most people get. So, so I really, appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. And we'll have you on again soon. Uh, all right, bud. All right. This is Rebels Cause Radio, and every week we come to you. We try to we try to bring you something interesting from uh, the world of Christianity, our worldview. You know, whether it's a band or a different ministry. You know, we've had the guys from Creation Today on. We've we've had different apologetics guys. Uh, we've had a lot of musicians on. Uh, we always are trying to bring you something to uplift uh, somebody else and what they're doing for Christ. And uh, in the meantime, uh, before the next show, we really want to just encourage you to read your Bible to actually read it, to know what it says, to, to dive into the Word of God and just take it all in, you know, just daily readings, really put yourself on a schedule, commit to reading the Word of God. Uh, we want you to go to church, a good church, a Bible-believing church, one that is not afraid to teach the entire counsel of the Word of God, regardless of what culture says. We want you to love Jesus Christ. It's pretty central. It's just pretty center. I don't know what else to say about that. And of course, forsake the world. Until next week, this is a Rebels Cause Radio.